Welcome, buxom ladies and handsome gentlemen, to the first unofficial developer log of what will soon be the greatest game of all time, codenamed Total War Devon. Only codenamed because probably shouldn't name it after a game that actually exists or CA might attack me in my sleep. So I'm trying to learn some programming for having professional skills reasons and I thought what better way to do it than to create the ultimate video game that I've been ranting about for many years. So this is where it begins. This is going to be a roughly possibly monthly developer log where I demonstrate the supposed progress I've been making is basically just to motivate myself and uh, build the hype train for what is surely going to be the blockbuster release of an unknown time in the future. <laughs> so this is Total War Devon, this is where we start. As you can see it's sort of a grid based 2D thing because I am technically only one person and it's pretty hard to make stuff that's not 2D you know. That's why pretty much every indie game in the world <laughs> is 2D, at least one's made by one person anyway. So it's going to be a sort of I don't know, like, inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics sort of thing, where you move on a grid. It's sort of like a turn-based, but semi-real-time affair. I might as well explain. So we've got this uh, supposed map. It's not really a map, because the next thing I need to do in terms of learning how to make games is work out how we're going to do some form of map. But we've got this hard-coded map. It's just a big green area with some stuff manually plotted over there to uh, test things on a green background. So that's pretty exciting, isn't it? And we can scroll the camera. And the thing about programming a game is that every aspect of something you can do takes ages when you start from a step of not knowing anything. So the fact that I can move the camera and zoom the camera in and out on the map, that took forever. It's just things like that. And having the map exist at all, like having anything appear on the screen, that's like step one, making something just show up on the screen. Having this user interface bar be there all the time, that's another fun step. So what we could do in the game so far in Total War Devon is this. This is our unit, represented by a T thing. You select it. So that's that's already pretty something impressive. You can select the units. Now that took a while to, <laughs> to get going. And when you select it, it glows a little bit. And then it shows you the unit stats down here. So we've got, well basically I've just got these stolen icons. I don't know, there's probably going to be some sort of like tooltip thing one day that I could put in so it shows you what the stats are. It depends how informative these icons really are for people. So we've got troop number, morale, attack, skill and armor. So we're going to have just those three as the uh, melee combat stats. It's going to be a little bit less complicated than Total War which I think will make it easier to understand. And then over here we've got missile attack and that thing in the square brackets is going to be ammunition. So this unit doesn't have any, so that's pretty useless for this. Uh, that's range, which is also zero, because this unit is a melee unit apparently. See, he's got a sword. And this thing is speed. I don't really know how that's going to come into the game. Uh, it's going to affect what happens when two units try and walk into the same space. Like, the faster one will succeed, I think. So that's sort of what speed's going to do. And the way this is going to work is it's turn-based and real-time. So I've got this big action button here. So what I can do is select my unit. And this unit, I think it has three spaces of movement points. One day, like, there'll be some sort of thing like in um, XCOM where it shows you where you can move in one turn. But right now, we don't see that. What we have is this. So I can hold down the right mouse button on the place I want to move. And this arrow appears and it points... Uh, sticking to the cardinal directions, eight-way cardinals, as to which direction I want this unit to face when it gets there. This is basically like Final Fantasy Tactics or Dynasty Tactics or pretty much any grid-based tactical RPG that exists. So I'm going to say move to there and uh, face that way, face west, and it draws a line showing you that it's going to move there. Now, drawing this line was probably the hardest part of the development process, believe it or not. Drawing lines is virtually impossible. <laughs> At least it's virtually impossible in Unity, which is what I'm developing in the game engine. And using a pre-built game engine to get you started massively, massively accelerates. Like, if, if I just started from scratch, like writing code into a notepad file, then one month's progress would be I can make the screen turn blue, like, but nothing else. So the fact that anything is happening at all is thanks to Unity. So I've told it to move to there. It can move three spaces, one, two, three, so it can move to here in one turn. So we've got this action button, it's kind of like an end turn button, so I'll click that, and it moves to there. So that was one turn. Now what I'm thinking what will happen is, the way the game rhythm will work 
is you will have all of your units and you give them all the orders and then you hit the button. And at the same time as you're moving, the AI is moving at, at once. So it's kind of like turn-based and real-time. So it's like real-time, but it keeps stopping. So it stops every turn for you to give orders. Then you say, do that set of orders, and then they happen, and you can't give more orders while they're happening. So it's kind of like you have to predict where the AI is going to move in that turn, and then you make your moves based on what you think, and then you press the button to see if you were right. And there'll probably be some sort of auto turn thing so you can turn it on and just say keep cycling through turns so i might give a set of orders that will take 10 turns to complete and just say, say keep cycling through it so not to keep clicking end turn and uh, maybe there'll be a little pause thing so you can as you watch your units move when it gets to the sixth turn go oh wait a minute like this isn't gonna work anymore stop right i want to actually come in and give orders now so something like that i think that will work provide an interesting dynamic and still be turn based and have lots of pauses which i think will make it way easier to program and to make some sort of ai for which is of course going to be the hardest part of the whole thing so anyway let's see what happens when it reaches its destination in the second turn there we go it turns and faces that way as that original asked so that's asked sorry so that's great now actually i think no i'm wrong i was gonna say i thought i'd made it so you could rotate without using a turn but i think i went back on that decision so it does take a turn to just rotate on the spot but you can still move as well as so i can move to there you might notice that here i've made it so you can't move diagonally and i stressed over this choice for a long time as to whether you should be allowed to move diagonally and the reason I decided you can't is, uh, I can't really demonstrate it with one unit. Say this square also had a unit in it, and there was an enemy unit in this square, so the square just above it. If you could move diagonally, it would be possible to move from there to there. Now in my sort of imaginary game world, if there are two units here, they're in a line diagonally, and it's not possible to move through the middle of that, because this is actually supposed to be a continuous line of troops. So for that reason, I had to not allow diagonals unless you can actually make the horizontal and then vertical move. And so for that reason, you can see if I want to move diagonally, it actually does that rather than move diagonally. Now, one thing I could do is insert some sort of shortcut so that it detects whether it's possible to do that. And then if it is, just move diagonally so it looks nicer. But uh, at that stage, I can't be bothered. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that later in development. It doesn't matter too much. So there we go. We've got our unit. It moves around. And of course... The reason all these rocks are here is because pathfinding needs to be done, and that's the major achievement of Month 1's update. Look at that, I told it to go to there, and it didn't just walk through all the rocks, it's actually found a way to go around them. So if I keep slashing, smashing through action, there we go, it got there eventually, delightful. Any more interesting ones, there you go, move to there, it's decided that that's the fastest route, move to there, it's going to go up that way, it's decided that's faster to do. So ain't that delightful, that's a, a very nice start. So. We've got ourselves a game here, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty good game, I think. It's currently a game called uh, Rock Dodge, and it plays itself. Uh, you don't actually have to dodge any of the rocks, you just tell your guys to go around it. Pretty sure I can't order them to actually stand on the rocks, and I can't. And the development I made just half an hour ago was to stop you from walking outside of the map. That was pretty exciting. So you now can't give an order. Oh, that's interesting. I can tell them to face left by selecting outside of the map, and then they'll face left on the spot. Well, that's something, not that that really matters. <laughs> so they, they won't leave the map. So that's a great start, of course. And this uh, yellow area, by the way, is uh, an experiment in having a piece of ground take more movement points than other pieces of ground. Right now, every square is 10 points. There's 10 movement points, yeah, and a unit has 30. So if I say move to there, these actually cost 20 points, which means it's going to take a long time to get through. So you have to only move one per turn because it's got 30 and it spends 20 per turn moving. So... It gets to here, oh, sorry, let's move again, so it gets to there, it's got 10 movement points left, but it says I need 20 to move into that space, so it just decides it can't move at all, and just stops, that's what's happening there. So that's pretty exciting. One thing I was thinking about earlier today is actually, if I do that, yeah, if you want to move really far diagonally, it's going to do that because of the lack of ability to do horizontal movement, and instead maybe you want it to zigzag through the middle, so I might have to change how pathfinding works to try and make it do that. But I'm just sort of, this is sort of fine details at this stage. I'm more interested in just going through all the basics of game development, putting something really basic in so it's possible to do it. So this is of course like a battle scene and in theory there'd also be a campaign scene in the uh, full game. We'll have to see how it all works. So yes, next stage is map making. So finding a way to like have an external file that determines what the map will look like. So I can design a whole load of maps and then when you start a battle it'll load one up and put all the right 
squares and shapes and things in the right places and have all those things be like somewhere impassable, like have rivers, have... I don't know how I'm going to do high ground. I've, I was thinking I want to have some sort of hill system, but actually in a 2D top-down game, you can't really do like height because you can't tell the difference. You need to somehow sort of draw it around the edges or something. I don't know. It could be quite difficult. Really, you want some sort of isometric view, but that's just sort of a tier harder to actually do. So Total War Devon 2 will be an isometric view, I think, so we can include height and things like that. But right now, it's going to be top down, so there's probably not going to be much excitement height wise. Unless, I don't know, I could like move the camera so it looks at the 2D world from us. Because this is actually technically a, a 3D space. I don't know if I can demonstrate that. Maybe if I move out of. How do I? Yeah, so look at this the scene view. No, it doesn't show it, it doesn't generate the map. So it's actually a 3D space with a user interface in the middle. So it's not actually 2D, it's a little bit of an illusion. Anyway, I think that's a little enough rambling and the end of today's developer log. So, next time, the map might look a bit better. That's the objective and maybe have it so you can have multiple units. I actually have already programmed it so you can select multiple units at a time, move them all at once, but it barely works. So that's not really happening in this test. And I mean, to do things like having it load an army and put it in a deployment setup and things like that, we're just going to get infinitely complicated. So I think the most progress that will ever be made in one month was this month. So the progress from nothing to something that looks like it could be the beginnings of the game. And then every other stage is going to be really hard. So that'll be good. <laughs> won't it but of course the hype train for total war devon cannot be stopped so i'll do my best to provide the world's greatest strategy gaming experience one day and well i mean not that it's not already the best game i mean look at this you can move the the, the blue t around the gray spaces and that's pretty special i think one day might even have combat in it then it'll be a real strategy game anyway i'll see you in the next episode of uh, codename Total War Dev and real name Pendings Developer Love Log Bloody Hell for month two. Have a good one. <laughs>